to draw a bisecting line and I want this bisecting line to go straight up the center and I need this line to be 42.48 now if you're asking well how did you come up with all these different sizes and measurements well basically I'm just take a drawing or anything that I can find from plans or whatever and I draw them or I draw it to fit my need if I have photographs I, I try to make basic intelligent measurements and I basically try to um, get these figured out Okay, I believe we're live again. This is Speed at the bottom of the helix, covering over 40 years of model railroading in both N and HO scale. Our next presenter models the Colorado Front Range, focusing on Colorado and Southern Railroad from Loveland to Colorado Springs. He works as a field service engineer, repairing robotic and laboratory equipment, which is why he built his own laser systems. Today, however, he will show us how to make the drawings that these lasers need. Welcome. To Mike Deverell. 
Thanks, Pete. So uh, right now we're probably in one of the golden ages of model railroading with the ability to basically three print or laser cut anything we need. So we're going to take a look at this presentation here. Let's make sure I can share it. All righty. So um, this first building you're seeing on the back route, this is uh, some of my uh, first when I first got the laser and was, was working on it. You'll see some of these throughout here. And laser drawing is really quite simple. And so it's about keeping it simple. Now, if I could just make the thing go. Nail speed, we're going to have to do right. technical difficulties here right now. Right or left arrow? I am trying the right and left arrow, but we seem to be having a uh, computer problem here on my behalf. Let's try a presenting it straight like this. There we go. Let's see if that works. There we go. A little slow on the pickup. There we go. Okay, so with lasers, uh, any class of CO2 laser uh, will we can use this method. Although talking with Speed and Jim Rent, both of them have lasers that uh, that have some very interesting features. They can print like a regular printer, and in those cases, we'll have to do some some special things. But they can still use the same technique. Uh, it's built into their laser. It works just. Like I said, it works with any CO2 laser, and they're going to be using a DFX file, and we'll get into those later on. Um, lasers are broken down into two, um, two power sources. You're either going to have milliwatts or watts, and this is a measure of how strong the laser is. Um, and you can find these on just about anywhere you want to. If you're looking for a laser, which is probably why you're watching this or you already have a laser. Here's my thoughts on lasers. So first we're going to deal with um, the milliwatt lasers. You'll find these at uh, 6,500 and 3,500. You'll even find them at 300 milliwatts. These are at uh, 3,500 milliwatts. That's the equivalent of a 3.5 watt laser. As you can see in this drawing, they're very simple. Um, they are really used for cutting paper and engraving into paper more than anything else. You can cut 16th inch MDF with them. Uh, you can find these usually for a couple hundred dollars, maybe a little more than that. And uh, if you just want to experiment a little bit and just deal with paper and cardstock, these would work really fine. This is a K40 laser. This is the very first laser I bought. These are available all over eBay. Uh, they range about $400 now. Uh, they say that they're 40 watt lasers, but the tube is only about 35 watts. You can overdrive a tube up to 40 watts, but you're cutting the life expectancy of those tubes. Uh, laser tubes are just like light bulbs. Um, they do burn out after a while. You have to replace them. And, and, and uh, so overdriving them will shorten the life of those tubes. You can also find... Um, Additional lasers that are bigger than the K40. When I first bought my first K40, they were about a six by six inch area um, that you could cut with. Today, they're now sitting about eight by 12 is what you'll find them to be standard. You can get larger lasers. And, and the bed, the cutting bed is really what you're paying for. Um, lasers, are you going to find them between 40 and 50 watts are pretty standard on, the, on eBay. The next one you could do is maybe DIY build your own, which is what I did. There's plenty of plans out there on YouTube. Um, there's plenty of, of folks that have given um, plenty of videos on building them yourself. Uh, that's what I did. These lasers can range from really inexpensive to quite pricey. Uh, this is a, a, an example of one that you're seeing without the skin on it. And here's my laser itself. This is the laser I actually use to do most of my cutting. So um, 
and my laser bed is uh, 26 inches by 33 inches wide so it's quite a large laser uh, bed to work with and very handy so what do you need if you're going to do drawings for laser uh, you need some type of vector drawing program an example of that would be adobe illustrator corel draw or any program that will produce a dfx file uh, many CAD programs will also produce a vector file doing this. A DFX file uh, is a file extension for a graphic image. Vector drawing program produces a DFX file. And once this file is produced, um, depending on the laser you have, some of them can take the DFX file directly. Um, some of them you need to actually, for instance, uh, I think Tony Ryan uses a milliwatt laser and he has to convert that DFX file into um, G code, which again, it's, it's, you're still taking that DFX file. This is just based on your particular laser and on what you're gonna have to do. So I use uh, Corel Draw 6. You can usually find Corel Draw and eBay for less than $100. I found mine for 50. If you want to buy a newer version, you can go to Corel. Um, there are about $110 for a brand new version of um, Corel. I think they're on now Corel Draw 20 or 2020 or something like that. Um, I'll be honest with you. Most of the features that are on there, you're never going to use if you're using it for laser drawing. If you're doing graphic artists, yeah, you might use it. might be handy. Also, the K40 comes with a Corel Draw. It's not a full version, but it works. You can work with it on your computer. It uses a little dongle to use it, and it works just fine. So um, you can use that if you want to. Um, but I, I think it's worth paying the $50 to, to get the Corel Draw. This is what a, a simple drawing looks like. Um, it's nothing more than uh, the actual drawing of the sides of the buildings. Um, and things like this. And this will then produce a building that looks very much like this. This is one of my first buildings that I built. Um, it's just a simple garage, but it's nice to work with it. And when, when working with these type of lasers and drawings and different projects, the real learning is gonna be from drawing and then experimenting, drawing and experimenting. So eventually you'll get really good and you'll figure out how your laser works which is really the part that you're going to have to do the drawing is the simple part it takes the most time but then once you're doing that taking that drawing to the laser and actually learning how it's going to cut the material and everything is what's going to be really the tricky part of all so at this point in time we're going to go to our first video so we're going to show you how uh you start the drawing so i think um Gordy, you want to start that okay, first so video? What we're going to do is we're going to open up Corel Draw here. And again, I'm using Corel Draw 6, as you can see. And from the very beginning, I'm going to go ahead and start with a new file. Um, the custom format here is designed to fit on my laser. So the measurements that are there are the actual size of the bed of my laser. Um, you can work with different sizes but i find this just to be easy that way i know that when i start it's already going to fit onto my laser bed if i have any questions so we're going to start by drawing this garage now the way that the laser understands what to do or I should say how you're going to control it is by the drawings and colors so typically whenever I work with something I'm going to draw, we're going to start with just a side wall of the garage. So my side wall of this garage, I'm just going to grab a box. And again, I'm not going to try and teach you Corel. I'm just showing you how to draw one of these things. So my box, the side of my uh, garage is 63.5 millimeters and it's 30 millimeters tall so that's my garage side wall and I need two of these so I'm going to duplicate that drawing because I need two of them and typically you can it, the color that you use is up to you but typically I use 
uh, the color red to emphasize that I'm going to cut something. So I'm going to just change these outline colors immediately to red because that's a solid cut. Okay, so anything you see on a drawing that's red will be a solid cut. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our ends, our gable ends. And so these are going to be 30 by 31.75 wide. So I'm just going to come in here. I want these to be uh, 31.75 wide and 30 millimeters tall. And then I'm going to draw a bisecting line. And I want this bisecting line to go straight up the center. And I need this line to be 42.48. Now, if you're asking, well, how did you come up with all these different sizes and measurements? Well, basically, I'm just take a drawing or anything that I can find from plans or whatever, and I draw them. Or I draw it to fit my need. If I have photographs, I, I try to make basic intelligent measurements and I basically try to um, get these figured out, you know, through sizes of windows or car tires or things like that that I can use that are in a photograph. And I'll use that to basically um, decide what size to make something. So. I've got my end gable here. I'm going to need two of these. So I'm going to duplicate this again. There's two of them. And uh, this one, one of these has a door on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a door that is, oh, I didn't, I've got a cheat sheet showing me how to do the measurements here, but that's okay. Well, I want it 23 wide. And so I'm going to make this 23 millimeters. And then we're going to put this up into it. And I'm going to center it. And that definitely needs to be taller. So we'll say that's how big our door is going to be. I need to get rid of one line here. There we go. There's my two gable ends. And I'm going to group these together just because I like to be able to grab things and not have them get away from me or split apart. And again, I'm going to turn these lines all red because I'm going to want these cut out of my material. So we'll go to red. There we go. So now I have my two sides and my gable ends and now I need to draw in some roofs for these things. Um, I'm also going to make sure that this is on the same there we go parallel as that that looks good bring these just a little closer I know you're like well what's all the deal it, you'll see in the end when we go to put the siding on the buildings I try to line all the lines up so it makes it nice and easy when I'm doing the siding. Okay, so now I need the roof material, the two side panels for the roof. So um, I've measured these out, and, and if you ever had a question, you could actually take this and you just measure from this node to this node. And I'm you can see that I am at 20 millimeter, 20.39 millimeters. So I'll we'll undo that. So I want to make sure that my square, my roofs overhang some. So we're going to make them 25 by, and I have to know those are 63. So I want them 25 by 65.5. So we're going to go into here. Our length is going to be 65.5 
and our height is going to be 25. There we go. There's my two, one of my panels. We'll duplicate that again. There's two panels. And again, these are going to be cut out, so I'm going to make their outline color will be red. Okay, so these are ready to be cut and put into the model, but these are not ready because I need to make these look like they have siding on them. So we're going to start with a line, and I typically just take a line and I draw a parallel line here, and it's long enough that it's going to cover across the entire section here. And because this time I'm going to change the power, in this case here, I don't want to cut through either the cardboard or the, or the basswood or the, um, the MDF. But what I want to use is I want to be able to just engrave this line into it. So I'm going to change the color on this one. And usually the color I use for engraving is blue. Again, the computer, the laser and everything doesn't care because you're going to assign these values when you make the cut. Now I want a bunch of these together and I need to have them approximately 1.7 millimeters apart, which works out to, I believe that ends up working out to about an 12 inch uh, spacing so I'm just gonna put this one right here I'm lining that up making sure it's lined up with my there we go perfect and now I'm gonna delete this actually I'm gonna set this right here and I'm gonna grab this one here and I'm gonna go control D and what I'm going to do is bring it right down to here so it lines up on it. There we go. And then I'm going to zoom out here. And because this is easy to do in Corel. I'm just going to duplicate that down that line and the spacing between each and every last one of those is 1.7 millimeters. And then I'm going to take this out and that's my siding. And I'm going to take this siding and I'm going to grab this top line and I want this top line to end up at the very top of that building and I'm going to look at it and evaluate it and decide you know I don't like where that's at I'm going to take this line right here and remove it to the bottom and see how it looks that's much better but these are not on the same plane so I'll bring them down to line up with that bottom line so I'm going to take this and grab this one right here and I'm going to just bring it down so they're all on the same line so when I build this model all the the um, siding will line up from corner to corner and now I'm just going to take and delete all the blue lines I don't need and I've got a little handy tool here called a virtual segment tool and what this does this tool here and just removes everything to the lines so until it, it will remove everything till it runs into another line just like so uh, no I want to be careful with this let's do it this way do that one more time here 
and then we do this right here okay all my siding is done oh I don't need this in the center either but I'll be careful because I don't want to delete any of my red lines and we move this line right there there we go so all my garage siding is ready to go so if I have a door to draw for this garage door we're going to take this garage door and we're going to just draw this just like so and make sure I've got it where it needs to be so this is the opening I have but I need my opening to be a little wider and a little taller so instead of 23 I'm gonna make this 27 that'll give me two millimeters on each side and then I'm gonna make this a little taller by making it 27 tall there is my garage door and what we're gonna do with this door is we're gonna point oh let's put make it a five panel so if I have let me remind myself how big this is 27 so let's divide 27 by five panels so that we know it's going to be 25 and some change so 27 divided by 5 5.4 so I need a line that is 5.4 long and then I need a line that's as long as this going across perpendicular and I'm gonna grab this and just set it out of the way for beginners Put this in the center there's my first panel whoop and I'm gonna grab this and set it right there again making sure that it's touching then I'm going to grab this line right here and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring it right there. Make sure it's touching. It is. And then just go duplicate, duplicate. There's my garage door. Take that out of the way and delete that. Now I want some lights in this garage door, so I'm going to draw a couple thin ones here. And I think we'll go with 10 by 3. And I think we can get remember some of this is off, so we're gonna just put two of these in here. I think we can get two in here. And there's my garage door. Now things we want to do these boxes this box and these boxes here all get cut through so we'll change their color to red but these black lines I want to convert to blue because I want it to scribe into this so I'm gonna grab that line that line that line and that line and we're going to convert their colors to blue there you go you now have now I gotta group this together so I can move it as one so now I have a garage door my gable ends my roof and everything and then we're ready to go to the laser and that's how you do a drawing for a laser it's a simple drawing nothing more complicated than that now the issue is this is easy and these are some of the first projects I, I, I would start with if I was learning to do this is to do something like this what happens is you can get into this and you can then start drawing things 
that you draw a lot of and it gets more and more complicated so if you've been following me on YouTube you see these my UP freight house that I've been doing this is the drawing for my UP freight house these are the first part of the drawing right here you can see that I've got roofs back walls labeled these are panels that go in between these uh, doorways to hold a mop framing and everything that holds everything in part together this is the head house these are the corners the drawings of the corners of my buildings these are this drawing includes cutting scribing on each of the lasers so there, there's three colors and I use three different settings to cut those corners out now this is cut out of a different material than these materials and I typically group my stuff up so I can just grab them and save a portion of it to cut it these are my doors and windows that I'm working on so these are doors uh, this is the dock work this is the balance work these are my freight lights these are the frames to my doors um, these are some additional windows for the law for the uh, head house uh, some modifications I did to some of the different parts and a lot of times I'll keep portions of it because I might end up coming back um, some of these are for holding the lights inside the actual building itself so that's what some of these framing pieces are this is all my foundational stuff so this glues down and the blocks that go in between it then we get into brick and I'm sure somebody's gonna ask me how do we do brick this is a PDF, uh, 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 a uh, JPEG of brick that I've converted into black and white and use a gray gradient. And this particular brick, the nice thing about it is you can see I can pull it apart and I can bring it back in. And the brick all lines up so that it cuts it out perfectly neat. So what happens is, is even the textures that you see here get cut into the MDF when I'm doing brick work. So that's how brick is done and it's it's done differently on the laser than the cutting. The cutting is done by simply telling the laser you want to cut. When you're doing something like this, this is called rasping or carving on the laser and the laser uses a different method and that's a little more advanced technique than what we're going to cover in 101 but that's how you do bricking is is you do something like that my drawings my drawings also include many times photos that I have plans I might have so I can go back and refer to them when I'm drawing uh, temps these are things that I'm temporarily either working on or I'm trying to modify it might be part of the building I'm building and I want to keep this for a long term as I'm working on this uh, cuts are when I'm actually pulling something out and I want to cut it. This is the portion I'm going to save to take to the laser. And then I think the last one, oh, these are some, these are the uh, shadow boxes that I build to put my lights into my buildings so that only certain windows light up. And I just put an LED into one. You can see here this is, this is the size of the LD and this will fit in the top and my left and light of the shadow box and then I just close it off and that's how I keep certain lights turned on and I cut them for the size that I need it and this forms into a box so you can get pretty complicated on these drawings um, but that's how you do that and I guess at this point in time we'll begin to address products that you can use to cut out with a laser Certain lights turned on, and I cut them to the size, and I need to form to the Do you think it's pretty complicated? All right. Yep. All righty. So, what, ready? Okay. So, what can we use to build with? Uh, my favorite product is MDF, and I use 8th inch and 16 inch MDF. And also, another product that falls into that MDF family is a product called Polyback. Um, and you can find it online and this is MDF that's about paper thin and it works absolutely fantastic if you take a look at like the doors 
or my uh, window frames that you find on these houses in the buildings, they're oftentimes made out of this polyback. You can use cardboard, uh, cardstock, uh, shirt cardboard, those type of heavier 50 pound, um, 110 pound, and even thicker. I've got uh, some cardstock that's probably 16th inch thick. Use that a lot. Paper. Paper and cardstock are probably my two products that I cut the most with. Um, I do do it with for doing a lot of my mock-ups before I even build the building itself. Uh, just a little warning, uh, when using paper, uh, the number one thing that catches your laser on fire is paper. And the advantage of using a lower, less than 50 watt power uh, or laser is that it's less likely for the paper to ignite, but it still will. And if you look online, you'll see plenty of people that have burned up their K40s and other lasers by, by using paper. So you need to keep an eye on it. Um, but paper is absolutely fantastic. I love using cardstock to mock up my stuff. Acrylic sheets. Now, when we talk about acrylic, we mean acrylic, not Lexon. Uh, Lexon uh, will release um, chlorine gas, which is not very healthy for you or the laser. But if you use acrylic, uh, laser works absolutely fantastic with acrylic. And if you have a source for acrylic, um, it's a great product to, to laser cut and work with. Um, it's expensive if you have to buy it outright. That's why I use MDF. Um, so, you know, take a look at acrylic if you want to use something like that. Basswood. Basswood is what's typically used for a lot of these um, laser cut kits. Uh, my feelings on basswood is basswood is great with the exception of it's, it's a natural material. So unlike MDF, which is very uniform throughout the entire product. So when I laser cut or, or, or um, um, cut bricks into my MDF, it's even and it's consistent throughout the entire piece of wood. Where if I use basswood, there are soft and hard spots in them. So it will create a little difference in them. It's workable and, and obviously the manufacturers do it, but it, basswood's awful hard to find in sheets that are uh, 24 by 30 inches. So just being fair with you. So, um, so we're gonna go to, to the laser at this point in time after I've selected the product I'm gonna use. And I use light burn software to control my laser from the computer. As you saw back, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was um, shot my showed my picture of my laser, I have a computer that sits right by my laser that has my light burn software. I just take my DFX file and I just simply uh, plug it into the computer, load it up into light burn, connect it to my laser, and voila, I'm, I'm controlling my laser. I can uh, simply take a USB stick and stick the DFX into my laser controller and after uploading it, I can control it straight from the laser controller itself. Um, I have to go through and pick the powers for all the um, for for all the colors. But I think at this point in time, what we'll do is we'll give you just an overview of what laser, what uh, Lightburn software or any um, laser control uh, software works. So go ahead, Gordy, and shoot that second video okay, on. Okay. So this is Lightburn software. Um, this is what I use to control my laser, typically. Uh, I don't have to. I could actually download the uh, the DFX file straight into the laser, and then I can set my powers and everything based on the colors. The laser recognizes that as well, and it, it will do it. But let's just go through what I do for myself when I'm cutting. So the reason why we picked all the colors is that's how we're going to control the power of the laser. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import... I'm going to import my garage that we did. Now, this is not the exact same drawing we did because I wanted some different colors so I could show you how this works. So I cut with, I picked these colors because these are the colors I use typically on my laser. I use um, blue, red, yellow, green, black. Um, those are pretty much the, the five colors I use. And... 
as you can see over here these layers are set up the the cuts are set up based on the color so you see black I have a black line in here it's right there there's my black line and I put that there purposely so I would have the black show up here and this is the order in which it's going to cut <coughs> excuse me so typically what I do is I want to do any engraving first and then do my cuts last so the reds always going to be on the bottom of my cuts and it's going to cut it in this order so these colors will the power on here the speed and the power will change based on the material I'm using so if I'm using MDF cardboard uh, acrylic um, any of those type of products I've got a, a book that I keep track of what my settings are at now these settings are only good for my laser and that's because I took the time to check and see how they work on those particular products and what I wanted to achieve so typically I don't use black because black I use as I showed you in the, the brick my brickwork is is a gray scale and it uses black to gray so the black I use for doing my brickwork and that's why I typically don't use it for drawings I use it for just doing my brickwork and these powers are set up based on what creates the best brickwork for my product and what I'm trying to work with so you can see here I've got it set at a speed of a hundred millimeters a second and I'm running at 20 percent power on my 90 watt laser so that's typically what I use and then I set it to a minimum of 10 percent and because I use a grayscale on mine the laser when I'm rasping like this will use black, solid dark black will be a 20 percent and any gray color the minimum the lightest gray that it will cut on will be 10 percent of the laser power and that's how it cuts the brick and makes it work in that fashion so that again advanced we're not going to worry about that right now the other thing we have here is my blue so I can oh, I need to say okay this if I pull my blue this is typically what I use to scribe um, a uh, a line in my MDF uh, no matter what density the MDF is I use a 12 percent power at 12 millimeters a second so that's why I always use blue for that type of stuff uh, yellow is set for 16th inch um, MDF and cardboard I will use this speed right here or nope correction blue is slow no yeah this is what I use for cardboard yellow I'm sorry and it's 50 proceed at 20 percent so it's moving so fast that it makes a nice clean cut doesn't burn the line and doesn't leave much soot when it goes through with air assist on and then this is uh, my typical cut for eighth inch MDF. I'm running at uh, tw at eight millimeters a second at 27.5 will make a straight cut through on uh, my 90 watt laser. So that's just in and that's what the laser knows. I I programmed these in so when it sees these colors, these are the powers that it's gonna that it's going to dial into the laser, and it's gonna literally go right down the line. So it's gonna cut blue first. So it cut all these lines first. Well, it cut black first if I had one. So it hit this, and then it would hit these lines blue, and then it would go to the yellow lines and cut them, and then it would go to the red lines and cut them all out, and voila, that would be our model, and we would be done with it. So the drawing is where all the work is done and the laser just does everything else once you've got it programmed and dialed in and you know exactly what it's going to do. So at this point in time, I guess the next thing is, um, has anybody got any questions? We'll answer them. So let me hear from you and we'll start with that. Okay, so here's an example of what you can get if you you uh, get better at doing your laser work. This is the MJ O'Fally Supply and Company. This is an actual prototype building in Denver, Colorado. It's been modified now. It's much more modern, but this is what it looked like in about the uh, 1959 time period, which I model. Um, 
you can, everything on this was done with a laser and it's all out of MDF. Even the stenciling I did out of uh, painter's tape, uh, literally stenciled the letters into it, then taped it onto the building and then, then painted it. This building is all completely MDF except for the green trim, which is done out of basswood. Uh, if I were to do it again, I probably would do it entirely out of MDF. So that's an example of what you can get. One of the things that I wanted to do, and the reason why I got the laser is, is I wanted to make buildings that were much more prototypical in size. Um, nothing against any of the kit manufacturers or anything else, but I have a 900 square foot building to fill with a railroad. And one of the issues that I run into is buildings are way too small. I'd be building thousands of buildings and they just don't look prototypical. So by doing uh, by scratch building my own buildings, I can get a much more realistic looking uh, layout. Here's where you, uh, you can reach me if you're interested in my railroad. If you go to the YouTube, you can find the Colorado Front Range Railroad or on Facebook under the same name. Both of those uh, are available. And uh, at this, this point in time, Speed, I guess we're ready for questions. Ready for questions. First, the software part. Have you used SketchUp, and do you know if it could produce a DXF file? Um, I've used SketchUp when it was free from Google. Uh, since it's been sold and now is for purchase, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's only STL, but uh, you'll have to probably verify that so, uh, by, your, by looking online and looking at SketchUp and see if it has uh, DFX capability. Have you ever used uh, Inkscape? Inkscape, I dabbled in it a little bit before I got uh, the Corel version. It does work. It does produce a DFX file. I just find Corel to be easier to use. Okay. Uh, can you do a drawing in full-size dimensions rather than work in the model dimensions and then probably scale it down? You can, but understand that um, the problem with that is it, it's a software issue. So when you're using a vector drawing, the drawings that you're drawing are actual, they're the actual size of what you're building. So when you're working in that, you would have to be able to scale it down. So you'd have to be able to figure the scale factor going into that. Uh, the other thing to take into account is, is like, for instance, when I did my sugar mill, um, I had to compress that. If I were to do it to actual size, it would have been over a 10 foot long building. So you're always dealing with this compression. If you notice that I worked in both um, millimeters and inches, I'm accustomed to that, mainly because I work in the scientific field and everything's done in metrics. So for me to convert from millimeters to inches or inches to millimeters doesn't take me long to really figure it out in my head. So that does create some problems. Um, but I do find that working in millimeters is easier because the measurement's smaller and I'm dealing with whole numbers for the most part. Any suggestions on how to learn uh, Corel Draw? Yeah, there's like 300,000 different videos in YouTube on how to do Corel Draw. Really, um, it's not as hard as most people think. Draw is much more easier than a CAD program. Uh, you saw how fast I could whip out that garage. It didn't take me long to work with it. Um, I do use CAD programs occasionally for, like, when I design my model railroad, I use a CAD program. So the conversion from CAD to draw was very easy for me. Um, right now, I'm currently in the process of learning um, 3D CAD, which is a challenge um, using Fusion 360. If you're Comfortable with, with using programs, you'll probably figure out how to do these really quickly. But yeah, there's a lot of Corel Draw uh, videos out there on YouTube. I'd look at all of them. There are some really good ones on the, on the market right now. So someone used a zoom function and they zoomed in all the way on your uh, alignment of the side walls to the, to the big, big walls. And they were not perfectly aligned. So is that a problem? No, they're not. As a matter of fact, um, <laughs> You'll find that uh, this is one of the things, the advantage of having your laser and building your own laser cut kits, because once you begin to put them together, you go, yeah, that's not quite right. And I end up going back out and drawing it again or cutting it again. Usually, remember, I'm dealing in millimeters. So a fraction of a millimeter is not going to be very visible. Um, the laser itself cuts about a 0.2 millimeter 
curve on it. So if I'm off by 0.1 of a millimeter, it's not going to make an effect on the on the final product overall. Close enough for the six foot rule. That's right. Where do you get your MDF from? My MDF. I figured this was going to come up as a question. So let me let me just <laughs> uh, let me. I'm going to get onto a screen here. We're going to pull this up and I'll bring it over. Whoop, I'm going to bring it over here and we'll maximize this and see if I can pull up my share again. And we'll go like this. Okay, this is Encompass Media. This is uh, where I primarily get most of my, my product from. You can see that they have brown laser. This is the polyback. They have the birch plywood. Um, they've got ivory MD, uh, MDF, and then they have all kinds of MDFs. Notice it is, it, pardon me? Can you click share? Did I hit share? Ooh, I thought I did. Hang on a second. Hang on just one second. Go back to here. Hit share again. I didn't hit share. There we go. And share. Whoa, look at that. Okay, there we go. Can you see it now? There we go. So this is Encompass Media. It's encompass-media.townvstore.com. Uh, it's, it's really complicated. If you go to... The YouTube channel for me on, uh, I usually have it posted on one of the videos that's talking about laser, but you can Google Encompass Media Laser Material and it usually pops up. You'll see a couple other encompasses, but that's pretty much where it, uh, where it comes from. So I guess that would answer the last question. Do they also sell acrylic? They do not sell acrylic. Uh, the primary place where I, if I'm getting acrylic is going to be coming from, uh, I get it from Amazon or I head down to Home Depot. Um, I can cut on my laser up to uh, a quarter inch thick or uh, 10 millimeter uh, acrylic. Both of them work really well and they produce an absolutely fine finish. Cool. Well, Mike, thank you very, very much for your time and showing off your skills. That was the end of our questions. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for having me. And uh, I look forward to the next person that's coming up. Pleasure.